Hey, it's Metal Matthew coming at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be replacing uh, what I have in my Quamba stick, which is essentially this. It's a, a Sanwa JLF, and I'm going to be replacing it with the, the new JL, JLF Quick Release. Um, I just picked this up. I just got it today. Um, it's a, more of a convenience uh, modification where, um, as you can see, very quickly there's a spring release collar on here. When you pull the collar back, the two halves separates. So, um, which this would be a normal stick where the stick is solid. So, if you travel a lot with it, um, and you just throw it in a regular messenger bag, um, you could end up, you know, having it smooth, you know, cross up like this, and you could end up breaking the, uh, PCB or, or anything else on here, making it not work, uh, 100%. So, with this, uh, new, uh, piece, like I say, you can easily, uh, disconnect it, and quick release it, and throw it in a regular messenger bag, and you'll be, uh, you're off to go, off to go. Plus, if you like to change your, your tops, uh, it's very easy to change it because once it's in place, you pull the, the top off, and then there's a, there's a hex screw on here um, that you just end up changing with. That way you don't have to take off the, uh, the six or eight screws that hold it into place. So, um, let me get my stuff together and I'll show you how, to, how we're going to do it. Okay, to change it out. We're going to just need a couple simple tools. Well, obviously we're going to need the uh, extension itself. Uh, it also comes with a 3mm hex key, uh, Allen key, whatever you want to call it. Um, if you already have a TE stick, you probably already have one anyway, but like I said, this one already came with it. Uh, let's see what else we're going to need. You know, Obviously, the stick we're going to put it onto, in this case, we're going to put it on my uh, Kama Q4 RAF stick. We're also going to need uh, a couple screwdrivers. Uh, you're going to need at least a flat head for the topper, or the ball top, or a bat top, whatever you have. I also have a smaller uh, blade flat head. Um, and then to get to mine, I needed to use a Phillips head screwdriver, but you know, depending on what stick you have, you might not need it. And then I also uh, have some pliers. Um, might not need those. But, uh, I brought them just in case. In addition to that, I end up getting an additional e-clip. Um, now you should be able to use the one that came, uh, that's already on your stick. But, I figured, uh, it was as a just in case. Since I already spent the, um, $33 on, on the, uh, the piece itself, uh, the e-clip was only another 25 cents. So, just in case it goes flying across the room or... Or something of that nature. I have it. Uh, have it ready. Now, unfortunately, um, for some of you, this only works for the JLF style stick right now. Uh, so, if you got a submit to a stick, it doesn't work. If you have a HAP, I'm not sure, or anything else, I'm not really sure. I just know for right now that it only works for the JLF series. So, um, uh, so. This, like any other um, modification that involves you opening up the controller and exposing the ooey gooey electronics, is going to void your warranty. So, if you're worried about that, um, you know, I would stop here and not proceed. Otherwise, uh, we're going to go get into this and uh, see what fun we can get into. Alright, I took off the uh, back cover uh, to expose the bottom of the stick here. And so, just like the other video, if you watch of, of mine, I'm going to have to take out the ball top, which is a pretty simple thing. There's a, at the bottom right here is a slot for a flathead screwdriver. So you're going to get in here, you're going to hold the ball top, and then give it a turn. And, let's see. And once it, once it releases, then it's just a matter of um, holding and turning the ball. Now, when you, when you take this off, you gotta watch out. Uh, keep track of your dust washer and your shaft cover. You can set these to the side because uh, the dust cover we're gonna keep and the shaft cover I'm actually not gonna use. 
Uh, so the next step is um, we're going to have to take off uh, this E clip right here. And let's see if I can get a better angle. All right, it starts starting to go, and this is where you got to be careful that it doesn't fly across the room. All right, now the clip came off. Now you can set this E clip to the side because we're going to use it, and we're going to take the bottom half of the actuator off. Put that to the side. We're going to use that too, or keep that. Take out the spring, and now the shaft should come out. I might have to do some wiggling. Now, in this case, my um, the pivot point, uh, the pivot cylinder came off with it, and uh, we're going to use that. So we're going to take it off and set that to the side. Now, here's the uh, original shaft that came with it. And we can put that to the side, we're not going to use it. So, um, some models have an inner dust washer on here. And I'm not seeing it on here. Alright, so, I didn't, uh, I guess there is no uh, inside dust washer for this one. So what we're going to do is uh, pretty much install everything back and uh, let's go from here. So we're going to start with the... Uh, bottom actuator. Uh, you're going to put this in here like so. All right. And it's going to have to sit in there. You may have to wiggle around, I don't know, depending on uh, how difficult it is. You're going to put the spring back on. You're going to put the you know, top half of the actuator on there. The thicker side down. Now this is going to be where the tricky part comes in. Uh, this. All right, so we're going to take the assembled shaft like so. And by the way, if you look at this, there's a little like with it disconnected like that, it, it um it sits flush, but when I uh, reconnect it, there's a little bit and a couple millimeters, millimeter or two. Um, that's perfectly normal. That's fine. Um, so. We're going to feed this, you're going to put the the white pivot actuator back on, um, and then yep, we're going to find the hole and feed it back up through there, so it's going to come up through here, put the actuator back into place, and this is where it's going to get tricky by myself, let's find out how talented I am. All right. Um, I had to end up doing something a little differently. I ended up taking off the uh, restrictor plate and the PCB, and I set this to the side here because uh, I think it was it was getting hit up on the uh, micro switches. So once it's assembled like this, um, I'm gonna go ahead and now I'm gonna put the E clip on. Did have to use the pliers a little bit, but not a big deal. Alright, so now I should be able to just yeah, uh, put the PCB back on, put the um, gate back on, uh, and the other goes on pretty much one way. Alright, so now it's in place, flip it over, and now we essentially got something that comes off and it's, it's uh, very flush. Um, we take this and you can see it, uh, it'll sit right over no problem. Um, and then we're going to take the...
top half, screw the ball top onto place, and until it stops screwing, I'm going to take the Allen key and we're going to just snug it up. It doesn't need to be Gorilla tight, just snug. And put everything back on the place. And there we go. Well, that's a finished project. 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 And now uh, it's not recommended to pull up on here, so I'm not going to. Um, but you do have some play with there. Um, but uh, and to uh, take it off again. So, like I said, if you're traveling with it, put it in a messenger bag, uh, deep side of the collar, it doesn't matter how you do it, lift up, and then take it off. And pretty much the same way to put it back on. Now lift up the collar, slide it into place, and then there you go. And uh, that's a finished project. So, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, uh, anything of that nature, uh, feel free to leave them, uh, either a personal message or on this video.